Here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Money Metro. It is uh, August 24th, 2019. And we, of course, your host, Grid21 and Cappy. Uh, hi. Hi. Yeah, so uh, let me explain a couple things because this is actually really, really jarring for me. So this morning I slept in again. And uh, we were supposed to do the Murray Metro earlier this morning. And being the tired person I was, I slept in, so whatever. And then I was like, hey, I'm gonna, we can just do it later tonight. Um, which, of course, by the, time you, by the time you guys get this, will actually be, um, it'll be uh, Monday for you. So it would actually technically be morning. So actually, good morning. For those of you who are watching now, good evening. And because I didn't want to bring my stream down, because I was already playing Rocket League, prepping for Rocket League Rival Series, which for those of you who don't know, or, or that is those who be listening to our podcast don't know, that's basically the competitive esports scene for, like, the pro esports scene for Rocket League. And I was like, well, I'll just do a scene, I'll just do a scene collection switch, and we'll just do the morning match show, and we're just going to ride it by the seat of our pants again, because I am an on-the-fly person, and that is sometimes how my life goes. So there we go. Uh, shower thoughts, yeah, basically... Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, so anybody who was already here earlier, this is so jarring. I'm so, so sorry. I wouldn't normally do this, but yeah, that's how we're going to do it. We're just going to write things. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just go into our first article. I'm going to slide this out and then Kappa, you can go ahead and, and, uh, talk about our first article and stuff. And we will just, we will just fly with this. So go ahead. So what is this? This looks like, is this another like Ben Gate situation here or what is this? New Moto Z? Um well, Actually, uh, no. Pretty much what this is is the Motorola Razor uh, brought back from way back in, like, um, I want to say around uh, 2000, the early 2000s when flip phones were actually Flip a phones? Yeah. Why? So, <laughs> so Motorola is actually bringing back the Motorola Razor. However, it is going to be in a clamshell form, but with a foldable screen. Gotcha. Um, one nice thing about this is that it, it's an Android phone and a flip phone. So to speak. gotcha. Uh, it provides a six inch uh, display from what has been confirmed with um, FCC uh, and copyright uh, patents and other things like that. Okay. So there's no the there's a rumor going on around that it's going to get an early to uh, late 2019 2020 um, uh, release date. Got you. Um, so it's going to be the it's going to be at the high end um, uh, high end. Uh, to uh, the high end of a of the mid range market in terms of specs, so it's not. It's definitely not a flagship so phone. So basically, enemy. this is for old people. Lol, not joking. It's fine. Um, actually, I mean, it could. No, it, it, yes, it could. But uh, I may have just much... found my mama phone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, pretty much what this is designed. Four is actually people who want that nostalgia. Oh, all um, right, cool. So it it it's kind of like uh depending on if you like the nostalgia or uh something similar to that. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So like, I mean, flip phones. I know have been making a bit of a comeback for some people. Um. I realize that. Um, you know, there's some people who find it convenient to have a flip phone. Some people are just, they're, they're, they're going against the, uh, there, there's like a, um, smartphone revolution in a way where people feel like they're too bound to their smartphones. And, um, I know that my brother-in-law actually switched back to a, to a flip phone actually and got rid of his, his smartphone. Um, really? yeah, because huh. I think he said that. His reasoning was that supposedly he was getting too addicted to his phone or something, and therefore, um, or not addicted, he felt like there was a lot of features he wasn't really using much anymore, and I think because of also maybe possible job, like, 
change thingies maybe something like that don't call me on that some the effect of he just wanted to just switch back to something really super simple so um he's been using a um was like little small like um i wouldn't say maybe nokia motorola something like that really small flip phones or whatever just something super easy and that's what he's been using so um yeah it's not it's weird to see them now it's weird to see them kind of make a comeback but at least they're coming making a comeback in such a way where they're like um they are running like maybe like android or whatever so it's something that's familiar so they're like they're half smart half nostalgic type of stuff um uh Sa- septia mm-hmm. says nokia it's nokia it's no nokia i don't even know what that just kidding i don't even know what the joke nokia. is <laughs> oh okay nokia <laughs> all right um but yeah so that's kind of the that, that's that's interesting i mean when you said razor i was like wait razor as in the gaming company razor making a a a flip phone do you get uh do, do we get our own cor- corner or the android sent by the cyber life wait what what do you mean what? i have no idea what he means can you can you clarify your connor. question oh connor connor i i know what he's i know what he's I, talking please about please no, we're not me. getting our <laughs> Um, so Detroit Become Human, uh, one of the main characters is Connor, uh-huh. oh. <laughs> and he's a uh, android, so to speak. Oh, android, android, yeah. the operating. Oh, okay, bad joke. All right, where's? <laughs> wait a minute, I need to hold on a minute. I'm sorry, I had to. Um. All right, fine. That that's that's great. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's great. But then the question is, do we will we be able to repair our phones? As I know, actually, this is um, the uh, kind of moving down the article train a little bit here. As I said, this could be a potentially really short episode of the Morning Metro because I didn't prep for this as much as I wanted to. Um, but with every phone and every device, there's always a question of, are we allowed to repair our own devices? Um, and of course, as you guys know, things like, um, you know, Apple or whatever constantly restrict our abilities to repair our phones. Thank goodness there is things like iFixit who brought awareness to this, but the right to repair, um, I, I haven't a chance to keep up on this, um, as much as I wanted to, but, um, Cappy, so I guess if you want, I guess you've probably done a little bit more research on this than I have. I did know it existed. I did know that there was some legislation. Um, I think mainly in the U.S. government. But I'm not sure if even world over if this has been a thing. But basically, what it means is that, or what it's what uh, uh, the initial understanding is that uh, companies like Apple basically make you have to go to an official repair center to fix yeah. your device. So, what is this? So, is this an update on this proposal, or what? What's the general premise here? So this is actually an updated proposal. Um, pretty much uh, what the Federal Trade Commission is, is asking for public comments, right, on whether people should be able to get their electronics fixed by a third party or first party. Um, so first, so first party would be the owner or would it be the, pro- the provider of the device? The provider of the device or the manufacturer. Gotcha. Um, okay. So, say for example, you decide you want to go to a local store mm-hmm. on that that you know and is very well uh, liked in your area. Mm-hmm. Now, if you got your iPhone fixed through that company, that would essentially void your warrant. Right. Um, what what the proposed bills do is they actually uh, say no. You can actually get your device repaired by a third part gotcha. or a local uh repair shop not authorized by apple samsung mm-hmm. uh google or anything to that nature okay and you can actually uh get the official part from uh from the company without paying an arm and a leg. right so so pretty much these right to repair laws essentially uh, per- to allow customers to have their uh, electronic products serviced anywhere without voiding a warrant. As I say that, as I pull the battery out of my Xbox One controller, because I think <laughs> the battery is actually the battery is not even like holding a charge or something anymore for some reason. Um, 
Yeah, so like that's and that's really good because like I've always had an like I've always been a tinkerer of my myself. Like I I fix my own PC, I do all my own repairs on my computers, my you know, like everything. I, you know, I'm one of those people that I like to and plus you know, like the more you can fix it yourself, the more you learn about the device, that that you know, the more like, hey, like I can just download like a blueprint or a PDF or something to allow me to properly repair my own, you know, device and stuff. And, you know, one of the reasons why I've always been been like anti iPhone or Apple in general is because first of all, some of the upgrade abilities are so limited. And secondly, because I didn't have, you know, it, it is Roman like to get a simple device fixed and to have to be forced to go to an actual repair center, I think is actually completely unnecessary. Um, not when there's so many guides that are now available on the internet. Um, and I was really ex happy to hear about the fact that, yes, somebody finally understands that, you know, we should be allowed to fix our own devices. And to some degree, actually, the, the really good part about it is if we do have more rights to repair our own devices in the long term, it means that companies have returning customers because they get known for something. You know, a, a company, people, you know, like people return back to a company if they're known for something. Um, and in this case, you know, uh, Apple's known for, you know, high end products, high end overpriced <laughs> Apple tax. <laughs> I'm sorry. And so, <laughs> you know, you get one of these and it's like oh dang you know my battery is crudding out oh dang my you know screen needs replacement and stuff and then you go back to the company and they're like well you have to go to an actual repair center we can't help you whatever and so this legislation is really good because it's like oh now the company has a reputation for allowing for repair which should be allowed to happen i mean gee was you already put in like you already sunk in several hundred dollars just for the device initially to not have the ability to repair your own device that you bought is highway robbery. Um, and so if they get known for allowing self-repair or and or third-party repair, I think companies need to th see it as, wow, we have potential customers in place now because now they want to come back, buy from us again because we're known for allowing self-repair on a device. Yeah, essentially, that's what this is trying to do. It's pretty much <laughs> saying, okay, you have to do this. You you have no other option. Right. Which I I sort of agree with. I sort of don't agree with it. I uh, self-regulate compared to, like, the um, Federal Trade Commission coming in and other things like that, uh, compared like, the government regulating but, I mean, better than somebody, I mean, somebody's got to regulate it at some point because, like, I mean, the, the end user isn't going to, like, necessarily, I mean, they could throw up petitions for it and say, hey, like, you know, we want to have the ability to repair our own devices. Like, they could, they could do it. Like, they could be user regulated. But then again, it also makes sense that the, that the FCC is regulating it because they already regulate, you know, other things have to do with communication and what have you so this isn't bad that they're doing that that's not a problem um it's just a matter of what they allow you know what is allowed what isn't allowed that that's the trick how far will how much will they allow basically is a problem but it's not a big deal um so I, anyway I, I honestly think when it comes to like screens uh batteries it, it should be allowed because yeah when we and when smartphones first came you could actually like just pop off the back and swap out the battery right um that's why but, i still have my note four actually but yeah precisely now you can't do that uh compared to like your note four uh like a cheap um or like a um prepaid phone nowadays especially with the smartphone um they actually have like a samsung actually has a j3 where you can actually take off the back and just reinsert a new battery yeah um so yeah anyway but this is like you know this would be great for them to you know obviously this should go through i hope it goes through and i hope that like there'll be more agreements with companies that will be like yeah okay we'll finally allow this to you know to be a thing um so yeah, cool stuff. Um, it's it's great, and I'm looking forward to seeing what this uh, 
but this comes through and yep, definitely. hopefully this is a good segue speaking of things that are new to be repaired and are created this is okay so this this reminds me of those uh uh carbon nanotube things that were that uh Ted Link was joking about but what is this what is this thing here this is apparently engineers make a transistor and electronic devices entirely from thread yeah so is this there, like there's... is this like electrically conductive thread because that i'm pretty sure that was already a thing wasn't it no so actually uh what this is is thread-based transistor um pretty much what thread-based transistors are is a is a string that can actually send like a uh, electronic current that is very microscopic. Uh, I'm talking about like a three. Um, How many? What your mic cut out? Because your mic's been cut out quite a bit of here. And I don't know what your voice sensitivity is there on Discord. Yeah, there, I I don't know what's going on with it. Hold Please stand by. We have a small technical difficulty. Uh, let's see. So this is basically talking about. Let's. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Uh, team engineers develop a transistor made in made from linen thread, enabling them to create electronic devices made entirely of thin threads that could be woven into fabric, uh, worn on skin, or even theoretically implanted surgically for diagnostic monitoring. The fully flexible. Uh, this comes from. By the way, this comes from Psych.org. I think that's how you say it. Uh, the fully flexible electronic device could. Uh, enable a wide range of applications that conform to different shapes and allow free movement without compromising function, the re researchers say. Uh, in a study published in, in a ACS Applied Materials and, and Interfaces, the authors describe engineering the first thread-based transi transistor, uh, TBTS uh, for short, uh, which can be fashioned into simple all thread based logic circuits and th and integrated circuits the circuits replace the last remaining rigid component of many uh, current flexible devices and even combine combined with thread based sensors enable the creation of complex uh, completely flexible multi pixelated devices i actually see as being useful in foldable displays <clears throat> or foldable screens or uh, foldable phones i was trying to say um, because like, you know, if you could like, imagine actually making a display that actually is made from thread, like you could actually like electrify the thread to make it like, to, to make a display. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what, um, this is trying to do, uh, is basically have a very thin piece of, um, uh, carbon fiber or, uh, electrical thread, so to speak. Uh, be able to uh, do like electronic or electric sending and other things like that to that need. Huh. That would be really super cool. Um, yeah, see, I, was, I was actually digging into this uh, we, into the wee hours of the morning just to see what this was about. But from the sounds of this article, it's actually meant more for like um, uh, whole uh heart rate regulators i forget i forget what the exact um uh medical term is or anything like that like but heart heart monitors heart pumps things like that yeah same yeah, thing similar yeah. things yeah um the i can also see as being like anything I can, I can always see as being used for evil things as usual but that's just me um let me see let me See if I can read some of this. Read some of this article. In laboratory experiments, we were able to show our device could monitor changes in sodium and and uh, ammonium. Um, uh, I think I'm saying it wrong. Uh, con Constituals at multiple locations. Said Rachel. I don't even know how to pronounce her name. I'm going to try. A graduate student at. Uh, as a graduate student at Tufts University School of Engineering and the first author of the study, theoretically we could scale up integrated circuit we made from TB uh, TBTs to attach a large array of sensors tracking many bio biomakers uh, at many different locations using one device. Um, and it's a critical innovation in the study uh, is in the use of electro wait electro trilytic infused gel as the material surrounding the thread and connected to a gate wire in this case the gel is made up of silica non particles that are that self assemble into a network structure the uh, electric uh, electrolyte <laughs> thank you electrolyte gel or 
I I can. Why are these I words? Am I Why are no these job. so hard to say? Can <laughs> can be easily deposited into the thread by dip coating or rapid swabbing. Uh, in contrast to solid state oxides or polymers used as gate material in classical transistors, the ion gel is resilient under stretching or flexing. Oh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, this could be really, definitely really useful in the medical industry. It's just I'm afraid of like, the only thing I'll be afraid of is that if something like bursts or gets like punctured for whatever reason, like what is this ion gel like is like, like, is it going to like cause like side effects, medical, more medical lawsuits or more medical issues. There's always a downside to something. This hasn't had any, uh, uh, clinical trials. It's just right now, like in the development stage. Yeah, yeah, it's in development stage still. It it there hasn't been uh anything like with um uh like uh medical trials or anything oh, like that because okay because depending on how they want to use it, they can actually insert it into the body like uh heart rate monitors and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Not not only that, we could actually get like a sweater that's like a fully uh full wearable tech okay what like it it can it can tell you like your heart rate at several spots uh, your blood uh blood h2o levels um blood pressure stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, Hmm. precisely i can see this being i can be i can see this being really useful for like the elderly people or like people who actually do have really serious medical conditions that could be really useful um definitely or maybe like man- monitoring like someone's um like brain condition after like a serious brain injury like i don't know head injuries stroke concussion. concussion stuff like that i know that oh gosh i know i had my head severely smacked during uh <laughs> squad con that was that was Adorable. interesting yeah it's very funny uh no not really it was I, i'll tell you it wasn't funny when you get hit by a door um but uh yeah, I could see this could be very interesting, but uh, it would definitely be something because the only other uh, the only other like thread electrical thread material that I know of is um, I know especially people who do like a lot of maker stuff um, like to integrate like LEDs in their clothing and such. But this is like I guess a, like the next stage of this technology to where now it's actually like could be potentially more medically safe. Possibly, um, it, it's it it's hard to say like. This is just pretty much in like uh, uh, development stages still, right? Um, so I don't know. We'll have to, you know, like like anything, you know, we have to see what kind of you know medical trials and stuff that come about from for this and and what have you. So yeah, nice. Um, so this is kind of a on the fly article because I was trying to I was trying to look like I did some kind of work but I might have to actually skim a little bit of this um because I I realized one of the things we don't talk about it we used to talk about like actual sports or the well, well no 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 the correction we were going to have somebody write about actual sports but then I realized wait a minute we're a gaming and talk show and world news show we should actually talk about esports instead because I think that's I think that's like the next you know next thing compared to actual sports but then i caught this one now i'm not like i'm not saying i'm a minnesota vikings fan i'm just saying like this is just something i just caught off the radar of something um and there's absolutely no article reference for this i need to quick drop this to you excuse me while I, where's your oh thank you discord for not showing me thank you all right you know what there ah <laughs> um there we go so let me put my discord on dnd so it doesn't go off um now, the Minnesota Viking owners are approaching their Call of Duty franchise. Uh, the Call of Duty World League uh, played in its final match this past weekend uh, as E United topped 100 uh, thieves to become the Black Ops 4 season champion. However, Call of Duty Sport. Uh, Call of Duty Esports isn't going away. For 2020, Activision's Blizzard long-running first-person shooter series is going global uh, instead with the French franchise, Call of City-based Call of Duty Global League. Uh, Ten franchise slots have been sold as uh, as of this writing, with similar... Uh, with familiar Overwatch League team owners such as Envy Gaming and Overactive Media uh, in the mix, as well as growing... Uh, esports hubs such as Los Angeles and Dallas. However, one organization and location pairing 
uh, in that initial group stands out as an as new and different Wise Venture Esports in Minnesota. Wise Venture Esports is part of the investment arm of the uh, Wife Wolf. Wolf, Wolf family, the owners of of the NFL's Minnesota Vikings. And huh. so this is their first uh, foray with uh, into the industry. According to Brett Diamond, Chief Operating Officer of Wise Venture Esports. That is too long a name. Just call it Wise Ventures. Why does it have to put the word on? Wise Esports. Wise Esports. <laughs> something not so... Oh my gosh, people. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and previous... Let's see. Uh, esports and previously the Vikings director of partnership strategy the family had considered previous esports opportunities but didn't find the deal fit until the franchise Call of Duty Global League came out the WIF family has taken a look at multiple opportunities in the past or uh, sorry in the esports space and for them their their goal was never to be the first ones in their approach was more to wait until it was the first opportunity the right uh, first opportunity the right decision and then when they felt like they had had that to dive into the uh to dive in head first diamond told the esports observer with call of duty uh league we really felt like this was the right opportunity at the right time between the historic success of call of duty franchise the version the vision of active activision blizzard and the success of overwatch league Diamond said that the Whiff family had watched closely as franchise uh, efforts such as the Overwatch League and League of Legends Champion Series LCS took hold to see how those concepts ultimately blossomed into fully formed and operational leagues. After watching for a while, the family was ready to make its play in uh, in the region. Uh, it's quote is saying here... Um, it was more about getting comfortable with the ecosystem and wanting to see how it played out over the first couple of years of that new model, he said. I felt like the evolution and mutation of the Franchise League model over the last couple of years is what really gave the Whiff family the confidence that is now, uh, uh, that is now was the right time and Call of Duty uh, was the right game. All right, so like... Right, right off the bat, like, what do you think of this, Cappy? As, as far as like an, an, an you know, NFL franchise getting into the esports scene, I, I honestly think it's awesome. Like, um, the fact that a lot of companies are now trying to get into, uh, like esports and other things like that really shows, like, hey, the gaming community actually cares about like competition, like friendly competition and stuff like that. Well, it's not uh, even we just, just a gaming community. I think it's just the fact of like normal like leagues, uh, like you know everyday people like you know outside of Twitch and outside of gaming, people look at gaming as you know like uh, you know forty and fifty year olds you know whatever just sitting in their mom's basement basically doing nothing but playing video games, getting fat on chips. You know, I mean, like, and I'm, I'm like a guy, I'm like 26 and, you know, yeah, I still live at home, but that's not because of, of me playing video games and streaming It's actually because of other, con other conditions, obviously, but you know, it's nice to see, it's really nice to see like it, uh, other sports companies, especially the NFL for as controversial as I'm sure the NFL has been like any franchise has been, or any sport has been sports series, um, yeah, no, I'm agreeing with you here. Like, yeah, it's it's nice that we're finally getting the the better respect and attention in the long haul. I mean, I mean, video game competitions have been going on for years. Like, there's a competition for Tetris. There's a competition for like uh, Magic Gathering Arena. Uh, mm -hmm. And and it's not only just that. Like, where it's just um, uh, video games in general. It's gaming in general. I mean, we're just now seeing like the rise of uh magic the gathering competitions where it's now being streamed in multiple platforms yeah uh there's also um like Yu-Gi-Oh with the ycs and so on and so forth um and then not to mention and i'm gonna and i'm like gonna keep talking about this until like some until the end of or till the end of uh qualifier four in september but um rlrs you know which i'm competing in for with um uh, my uh my team hydro one you know like the, it's this stuff like i mean and i think it was even talk about like esports in the olympics which i th i think that's supposed to still be a thing in the summer olympics i don't know 
I, I hope it isn't. I haven't had a chance to really look into uh, that. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look real quick. Because there was talk of it being in the Olympics, and I'm like, wow, that kind of adds a that adds a whole new because that would really change the uh, change the field entirely. Like that would really give some serious recognition to the the esports scene. Uh, let me see if there's anything else in here that I want to quick skim over. Uh, let me see. Uh, so the this guy that's that's been doing the course oh what's his name um this guy diamond uh said uh, at the end of the day it's all entertainment he said at any time you get people that are the best at what they do in the world you get them together and uh and and if they have have a skill that the public finds interesting then you're going to be able to build something around that that's true it doesn't matter if it's somebody's ability to throw a football or look at a screen and process where to move their fingers on a controller or kick a soccer ball i think that it's one of the th one i think that one thing that we've seen over the last few years he added as the industry evolves it's all about finding people that have the incredible talent and giving them a platform to use it yes absolutely i completely agree with that um because like you know there are games like you know like league of legends there are games like overwatch and um and rocket league and um csgo uh and a couple others that yeah there are people like it, we may be saving our computers, but we're funny, we're saving our computers using our minds at a level that no average human being uses their mind at, you know, and there's a lot of strategy. Like I've like just in this past almost past week alone, the amount of things I've had to think about in Rocket League and the amount of moves and like, you know, aerial shots and um, back passes and, you know, two, you know, you know, two V twos, three V threes ranked stuff like that. Like there's a whole like there's a whole. uh there's all strategizing to it. Um, Cavi, did you find out if, if the esports are going to be in the Olympics? Did that come up for you at all? Yes. Um, unfortunately, it is not going to be featured in the 2024 Olympics. Oh. Um, many officials are kind of skeptical on whether or not it's going to be uh, staying around for an extended period of time. Oh, so come on. They're, they're going to wait. However, if it does happen to um, uh, take off like it has been, yeah, they're they're thinking about adding it to the Winter Olympic. Winter Olympics, interesting. Yes. Okay. Um, just just to test it out, just to see sure. if, it, if it actually like works out as a an official Olympic sport. Sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, but for now, it it's kind of like yeah. We're not exactly 100% sure, so we're just going away. Gotcha. Uh, they they are excited to see what what esports are going to do. Don't get the don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's kind of like uh, they're just kind of iffy about it, basically. Yeah. Anybody yeah. in chat that has anything to say about this? By the way, the Morning Metro is actually like a a a uh, user contributed. It's not just Cappy and I talk back and forth. Like you guys are yeah. part of the audience. You're much as part of the audience as anybody else. So like. You know, feel free to say something if you've got something to say about this. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm inter I'm interested to see what how the N you know how the NFL makes their own branch into the Call of Duty League. I didn't realize that 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 COD had its own like league. Actually, mm -hmm. I thought it was just yeah. kind of its. I thought it was just kind of standalone by itself as like just something that everybody you know played oh. played on on a Saturday or whatever. <laughs> no, no, they actually been doing this for. Oh geez, um, I want to say since Modern Warfare originally came, oh. I'm not talking about the the remake that's going that's uh, being advertised. I'm talking about the original one on the Xbox One or not Xbox Xbox 360 PS3. Gotcha. Um, okay. And actually, Nintendo uh, Nintendo Wii, believe it or not. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh? There's a. Uh, there was a uh, teen version of oh uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare okay. that was a I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> like I have nothing. Against, like I, I kind of rant a little bit on on my Twitter about like how the fact that like COD just doesn't seem to like die, and I'm like, my gosh, how many Modern Warfare's? Do, how modern does Modern Warfare get? You might as well just throw Modern Warfare into the future and call it a day. <laughs> Well, actually, that's advanced warfare, but <laughs> okay, whatever. 
All right, whatever. All right, fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, you know, we'll see how this see how this goes and stuff. And I'm not gonna try to be a dead horse anymore because I don't have anything more to say about it unless some, unless people in the chat have anything more to say about it. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, this, this was going to be kind of a short TMM because I am really underprepared. I'm very sorry for those of you that are listening. Usually used to an hour long episode. However, if I can stall for time, it'll be about, you know, 40 minutes or so. So it's still a good, good, uh, good one. So while you're on your way to work, uh, this, the, you know, on Monday or over the weekend, you might want to, um, you know, keep an eye out for potentially a, well, you know, maybe somebody driving around in, I don't know, like a duct tape car. Yes, I said duct tape. Um, <laughs> Police, oh no, I'm sorry, unless you live in, in southern England, actually. Uh, so this comes from foxnews.com. This is actually kind of funny because, you know, duct tape is, is a man's best friend here. Uh, police in southern England were baffled on Monday by the most bizarre electric uh, vehicle they'd ever seen. The tiny white two-wheeler looked like an airplane cockpit without wings or a tail and had a body constructed from balsa wood. And duct tape. Oh, I'm sorry, Cappy. I should have permitted you before you uh, got timed out there. Rip. Sorry. Gr- sorry. Because uh, it said it li- no links in chat, and I have to permit you, and this is my main channel instead of my other channel. You're not modded on this channel, so that's why I timed you out, and that's why you're so confused in chat. Okay, there we go. Moving on. Uh, cockpit uh, without wings or a tail and had a body constructed from balsa wood, balsa wood and duct tape in, qu- in quotations. But the most surprising thing about about it may have been that it was found to be perfectly legal, apparently. An officer from the Beds, uh, Cams, and Hearts Road Policing Unit tweeted photos of the vehicle, which turned out to be a custom electric motorcycle that was registered and insured. The most unusual vehicle I've uh, stopped on a motorway in 26 years, all checked in all checked and in order, although I'm still not convinced uh, I know what it is, another officer wrote. One commentator said uh, she spotted it on the highway a couple weeks prior and posted a photo showing the driver in action. As if the car weren't enough of a, a conversation starter on its own, some commentators took an issue with the officer describing that the material used as duct tape, which reignited a long-running debate over whether duct or duck, or sorry, ducts, okay, duck spelled D-U- CK or duct spelled D U C T is the proper name. You know what? It all depends on where you live. <laughs> um, and there was actually yeah. there was actually more photos here. I don't know why. Okay, there actually were more photos here. I was going to show on stream, but for some very odd reason, FoxNews.com has chosen to be a jerk and not show me the rest. Let me actually quick refresh this. See if I can actually get the more of the photos because it's actually kind of funny. Um. No, they've appeared to have omitted some things from the, uh, did they actually, um, they actually em- omitted some photographs of the vehicle, which I find a little surprising and a little odd, because there were actually a lot more to it than this, but for the sake of it is, this is all the photo that there was, was this, um, this is what it looked like, and, and there was, um, apparently he was driving this, um, Riding around in, in uh, riding around in in a balsa wood car. Um. Oh dear, wrong button. Let me go back here. That that doesn't sound very. How is it street legal? Um. Like, like how do you get this street legal? England has some weird uh laws on the road, um, such as. I'm, uh, pretty much, if you can make it, it's drivable. <laughs> Oh, I guess so. <laughs> um, whereas here in the United States, it oh, has you to get pass slammed. Admission. Yeah, you get slammed yeah. so much harder. Um, my only question is, how do you not get the ex- How do you not get the the vehicle filled up with exhaust from? It's an electric vehicle, so oh. um, there's no emission. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm thinking about. I'm yeah. thinking because it said bike, and I'm thinking you, you classical bike, and I and I'm not, I'm not thinking about it. Uh, obviously, um, but yeah, apparently, if you you know if you happen to live in Southern England, you might find this man. I what what is like to drive in this though? Like, I mean, I, I, I want to know too. Like, it, well, it's kind of curious. I mean, let's be honest a car is essentially a couch with four wheels and an engine. That's basically um, what a car is. 
It depends because there's the Polaris slingshot, which is okay. a three wheeled vehicle. Okay, um, that's a bike with wheels and an engine. It's bike class. Yes, I, it it is a bike class vehicle, but it actually goes a lot faster than your uh, average traditional, bike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Um I wonder how long how long did it take him to build this and how how do you like I've seen you know, um, I, I, I don't know for those of you who watch Red Green. I know we do sometimes in our family. I know that uh, they always say the handyman's secret is duct tape. But, like, this is this is literally beyond handyman. This is, like, literally this man had a very long Saturday to spend doing this. Like, that this man, man, them bikers in the Western Hemisphere will enjoy this one. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um yeah, I wonder what it's. I wonder what kind of mileage he gets. Actually, it looks like did he have? Looks like he was doing grocery shopping too. Like I see a box of cereal in there. I see some bread in there. Like does he like? Is this his everyday like shopping? How do you get? Wait, better question. How do you get in and out of this vehicle? Like why aren't there more photos? Like there was a whole stack of photos right here. Okay, well how do you get in and out of this thing? Is my question. Um, how does it manage to support the weight? Um. Like this is this is honestly an engine like this is really kind of an engineering feat when you think about it. Like it's it's actually kind of it's it's ingenious, but then also like crazy at the same time. Wait, is there are you sure there's no more photos on this? Because this was like really, really good. No, um, there no So So from the looks of it, it just looks like it um opens up from the inside, like you just push on the window. I guess. I don't know. A former engineer, maybe I, you would have to be. There's no other way that they would that it would actually like work like that. I, d I don't know. Okay, well, maybe the, I don't know. Maybe he's gonna set a trend for the vehicles of the future. I mean, we, always, we want him to get smaller and lighter. Although balsa wood at a high rate of speed would be very, uh, very splintering at best. But um, shh, wait, I can do better than that. Hold on, It'd be a very splintering experience. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, oh no! Wait, I, I have wait. I have I have a actually. You know what? I have a I have a worse deal. Um, what happens if the battery catches fire? Because I I because like the wood's just gonna burn like really really fast. Like I hate to think about it. The idea of like because depending where the engine's located, like because it looks like he's right in front of the engine, like right here. So how does he? Because electric vehicles got to put out some amount of heat, right? Um, uh, it, it's hard, it's hard to say, like, how much heat this would put up. Um, more than likely, it's a very minute amount, so. Okay. All right, fine. Well, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, yeah, all right, well, there you go. So, uh, if you're, uh, if you're on the road and, uh, you see a small white vehicle that doesn't look like a normal a uh, small white vehicle or normal bike. Um, watch what you're doing. So yeah, um, that is unfortunately like our, our sh one of our shortest shows I've ever done. Unless somebody can help us buy time, unless we buy time talking about something or revisiting something. Because yeah, but anyway, no, um, no, we're gonna just make this a short and a shorter than normal episode. But again, th those of you that are that are listening on our podcast, uh, I hope we hope you enjoyed the show. Obviously, we'll be back hopefully with a better constructed show. Um, but uh yeah so if you want to you know if you want to go listen to I, I need to play the outro where's the outro video okay so here, here's how this is going to work here's how this is going to work so for those of you that are on my channel right now stay here all right we're gonna go play some space engineers because cappy has it i have it gertron has it we're gonna go probably go mess well, around with that oh wait what are you gonna I don't do have it downloaded yet, oh come on get it okay then you you start you get it start getting it downloaded then restart your computer get your razor snaps installed we're gonna then, then then download it or whatever. You know, I wish you could download and restart at the same time. Imagine being able to download and restart things. Like of all the of all mm -hmm. the things we invented in, in 2019, why have we not? Why has Windows not allowed us the ability to download and restart at the same time? Like imagine hybrid downloading. That'd be amazing. Anyway, uh, but those of you that are on this channel, stay here. Uh, we're gonna run the outro for the morning match show. So I know it's gonna be kind of weird. I'm not ending stream. I'm just gonna like. I'm gonna have to, I have to end this show. Uh, I'm gonna do it with my scene collection switch, and then we're gonna go back right back into gameplay. So stay here for this. For however those of you that are listening on the podcast, this is the end of the show for you. Um, so we'll be back hopefully on. Let me go look at this. 
Uh, we're going to be back August... No, sorry, September 7th. Um, however, in September 21st... I should be able to do the Marine Metro before our, our before the Rocket League Rivals Series competition. I should be able to do that. So we're looking at the seventh, the seventh and the twenty-first for our next two episodes of Marine Metro. So that's what you have to look forward to. If you guys want to email us any articles or tweet at me something on Twitter, you can do uh, at the Morning Metro. Or if you want to tweet at me directly, you can do at underscore girl twenty one. If you want to email us articles, because we always we always love having articles, because I didn't get a chance to really check the uh, the email stack this week, uh, you can email us at the Morning Metro. And otherwise, uh, again, for those of you who want to stay for some gameplay, do stay here. You're, you can just kind of sit and chill while I run all this out, and then we'll be back and transitioning really really well. Um. Hold on, let me, before I have an accident and not have something die on me, let me actually go ahead and, and get, delete this action and delete, yeah, I can actually go ahead and do this. All right, because I have to make sure I time this all correctly. Woo! All right, here we go. I don't know what's going to happen, so we're going to ride it by the seat of our pants. You ready? Uh, Yo. Here we go. For listening to the Morning Metro. All stories and articles belong to the respected companies. Songs used for broadcasts. Intro music. Retro Funky by Persephone. Remix by Sundance. Outro music. 305 by Approaching Nirvana. All music belongs to the respected copyright holders. For article submissions, questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at themorningmetro at gmail.com.